Hey guys, I got a Chrysler 300 Limited here and uh, this is my vehicle and we have a problem with the alternator. Let me shut this door. Lots of cars uh, behind me. Um, I'm currently at home and I'm trying to fix this uh, issue uh, with uh, the voltage drop. As you can see, the vehicle is running uh, currently. It's uh, slightly about 1000 RPMs and I have my diagnostic scan tool connected and it says uh, detected a voltage below 11 volts uh, in the vehicle Volta data. Please pay attention to the voltage. Um, currently, I uh, would like to note that, yeah, we have the gas light on, but the battery light is not on. So if you're having this issue, you might not necessarily see a battery light because your battery is just not dead yet. And, and uh, normally, if the alternator is not charging the battery, you would you would get um, a battery light displayed on the screen. Now this could really catch somebody off guard because how are you supposed to know that your alternator is not charging the battery when your battery light has not even came on yet? Which then would be a huge problem for somebody that does not know uh, these type of vehicles and your battery light will come on, but it will only come on when it's, uh, it's gonna drop below a certain voltage, maybe like below 10 or something. So currently we still got some voltage going on. And then if you do see a red light, a uh, battery light, you might need to go ahead and get an exit and pull over somewhere, you know, hopefully like a Walmart or like some kind of parts store because maybe you're gonna need an alternator, maybe you're gonna need a battery. Uh, maybe you're just gonna need to have a way to get home. But anyways, we're not gonna get into all that. What we will get into is, is this. Um, I want to find out if there is something, uh, something here uh, in the system that is preventing it from, from charging. So as you can see, we do have um, some codes here. We do have a BCM body control module code. We got a transmission control module code. We got all of these different codes that I'm going to get into uh, in a moment. Uh, first, what I would like to say is this. I will be pulling this alternator out today. Um, I have another alternator uh, right there in a box. Came in from eBay. Um, so I do know I have a working alternator. Now, with this particular alternator, previously I had the same issue and I just replaced the brushes and that did not solve the issue. And I thought I was replacing a voltage regulator, but that did not uh, solve the issue because supposedly this is a BCM. So with all that being said, uh, sometimes uh, these vehicles have a body control module problem, which we are seeing right here, and that will cause the alternator not to charge. Now, I don't know if this is the case or the alternator is just bad. I, I don't know. Um, so I, I did hear um, from some sources online that uh, when a BCM, body control module fails, or your computer, um, it will cause the... Uh, the alternate not to charge your battery but also you might just have a electrical short uh, maybe blown fuse uh something down the line bad ground anything could cause your battery not to be charged okay so i do have a special tool um by the way i recently just got this car so it's, it could be a little bit a little bit dirty but let me show you i i do have this other special tool here uh, this tool will allow me to also see uh, where it does not have voltage uh, and things of that nature. I could also give it voltage. I could give it DC power. I could give it um, uh, a neutral, you know, basic ground and stuff like that. So the, the plan right now is to go ahead and scan these codes. But a little bit later on in this video, I'm going to be removing the alternator. Um, and I'm going to take it to the parts store, have them test it. Because I first want to find out... If the alternator, okay, started working a little bit differently. If the alternator is bad, if they're gonna tell me it's bad, then I know it's bad. If they tell me the alternator is good, okay, my hunt is over. We're gonna pull that alternator out, we're gonna stick it right in, and then test it to see what's gonna happen. Um, with this introduction out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what this, uh, uh, this is a TCM. Uh, let's see, let's just see what this fault code is about battery was disconnected okay so we're just gonna clear this dts no let's see i want to first take a picture of it um we will then clear this dts <sighs> so now we're gonna go go back um i, I like i like uh this type of list right here so wait a minute why is it still saying 
that there's a code. Should technically be no code. Well, let me read it. Oh, battery voltage low. So it's still telling me battery voltage low. Um, I guess it will continue telling me that because the voltage is, uh, engine cannot be running. Okay, let's just shut it down. Let's put it to second position. Let's go ahead and actually yeah, shut the engine off. It's okay. So that's that out of the way. Oh my gosh, I'm beginning to sweat. This car's AC obviously is not running as well. Okay, so that call did go away. So now let's just go ahead and go. Huh. What was I? What was I clearing? Um, looks like I was maybe clearing. I'll have to go back and look because I thought I was cleaning, clearing the same code, but it might have been a body control module. Um, okay. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and clear all of these things. Okay. Just gonna clear all of them. Let's see, let's see what it's gonna do because I really don't care to get into every little thing because it's just completely unimportant right now. With the battery being disconnected, um, so many codes could come back to your vehicle. The only one I was interested in is body control module and those other things. Um, now let's let's uh, let's uh, start start this vehicle up. And let's just, let's just do a scan again. And let's just see where, what happens. We are seeing voltage low, um, slightly hopping above 12. I don't know if it's, it, it is getting some charge. I mean, the fact that this is hopping around like that, uh, it's kind of telling me this, uh, maybe it's getting a tiny bit of charge, which, uh, you know, could be a problem okay so now this is less concerning than before so anyways let's go ahead and actually remove the alternator and see uh if it's so guys we're underneath the, the hood of the chrysler 300 so what i pulled out over here is the plug that plugs in to the alternator to inspect to see what it looks like you know the rubber itself is kind of like falling apart um I'm not gonna try to really do any more than that. It's falling apart, but the wire seems to be okay. I will have to inspect it to, to see like, you know, what's it looking like. But when I did that, here's what happened. A battery light came on right there. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is if I do plug it in, will the battery light actually disappear? But before I do that, I want to plug in my computer. I want to see if it actually reads any voltage. All right, so over here in this corner, that's a 12 volts DLC. Uh, I don't know if this is going to change uh, when I just uh, basically try to connect to this uh, vehicle. Um, so, um, yes, it is changing. And this is what I kind of wanted to see. I wanted to see uh, what's really going on. Will this voltage uh, show higher or lower? It's actually showing a little higher, okay? So here's what I wanna to try to find out. Um, I wanted to find out if this will fluctuate when uh, the alternator is unplugged or not. Uh, and why is that? Because right now, alternator is not technically, technically maybe, not charging the system. So maybe it's not gonna be really showing anything. So once I do plug it in, I wanna see if this actually fluctuates. I did plug it in. I don't really see any fluctuations because last time when I was recording this, it was actually showing like it was just going back and forth and it was just like fluctuating. I don't know whether or not. Uh, let's see. Okay, see like now it dropped a little bit when I kind of like went back. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but it's showing 12.6. It's like not really fluctuating. So I think I'm just getting the better reading, but the alternator is like itself is not charging. So obviously I found out what I wanted to find out um, that 
when I unplug the alternators, like this is kind of not being affected uh, at all. Um, I was hoping that it would be something different, but it's it's not. And over here on the dash, we still got our glowing battery. Uh, it is on. So you could see that at this voltage, maybe it fell below. Um, it was a result of that. So to just try to um, to try to basically finalize it, let me just like start it up again. I want to see if that battery light will disappear, which it has disappeared. And uh, I want to go ahead and back out of the system. I'm just going to back out of it and then just start over. What's confusing to me is that before uh, the voltage was fluctuating. It was like kind of like going like slightly above uh, 12, like it was like going like 12, 1240 maybe, 12.40 and then uh, lower. Which would kind of almost tell me maybe it's getting some charge, you know, whatever. Um, See, it's 11.85 now, and there's nothing on the dash just yet. It hasn't really came up. Um, so what I want to test now is, is the alternator actually dead, or is it not? Like, is it, like, what's really happening? Like, I need to really find that out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the alternator and have it tested. Hey guys, it started raining all of a sudden when I'm trying to remove the alternator. So the very first step uh, to removing the alternator, how I do it, uh, I just basically unplug it and it's plugged in this way, in this in this position. So you, set, you have to, you know, push this here and then it's gonna unplug. And then basically I stuck it through here, that way it's not in my way. I tried to remove my oil dipstick and it actually broke off inside. So I'll have to deal with that. So as you can see, there's a metal bracket here and with it in the way, it'd be, a, it'd be kind of difficult to disconnect anything. Of course you can't do it from the bottom, but you gotta remove it anyway. So the very first thing I've done is I removed this bolt. Uh, I marked it red last time. And the end of the um, uh, metal bracket, it's red as well to remind myself that that's actually where it goes. That is a, a 15 millimeter. So the very next step I'm getting loose is this one here. And uh, this is actually a 15 millimeter as well. Uh, I already broke it loose and I broke it loose with just a regular wrench like this, exactly as this is. But to break that one loose, I use this uh, regular wrench and then I use this uh, little extender right here just to um, maybe make it easier on you guys. I think I'm making this easy on me. And then over here, this is how you basically, you, you stick in a quarter uh, inch um, pry bar or whatever, or breaker bar in here. I, I actually have, a, I think like a half an inch or whatever, and then I basically have this extender. So when you stick it in here, as you can see, there's not a lot of movement. It's a very, very small, well, you could, you could do a little bit more movement, but it, it becomes uh, at, a, at a great challenge. I'm just gonna let, let go of this. Okay. So because of the little movement, I first removed the, uh, the belt from here. Uh, this was a simple pull and then I pulled it from the alternator. The rest of it, I'm just leaving it like it is. So now I'm gonna continue removing this here and then I will get in there and try to disconnect the electricals and then I'm gonna go at the bottom and then uh, remove remaining alternator. Hopefully take it to a uh, parts store today and have them diagnose that. Normally, I don't, want, I don't wanna work in the weather like this. It's raining. I got my garage here open. So kind of outside, kind of like in the garage. I could have maybe uh, acted a little bit more smart and stuck it over here underneath the, uh, the roof. But I don't want to have to do that because with the alternator being out of the way, the vehicle is going to be slightly disabled and it's slightly raised like this. As you could tell, this is a lot better. Um, now, I do recommend uh, setting uh, some kind of parking brake, which I did not um, because I had my son do the wheel chocks in the back and obviously they're not there. So it's okay. He said he can find them. 
um, so the car is not gonna roll back. And I always put these cinder blocks in front when I'm actually driving up on top of these things to keep them from sliding. They still slid just a little bit. I also have the metal ones right there and the plastic ones. I'm using the plastic ones because uh, the way the bumper is and everything, that's a little bit of a lower profile. But anyways, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with my okay, I'm gonna use my flashlight on the phone here to show you guys that this is removed. Now, um, this bolt, it's not gonna be able to uh, come all the way out. Uh, so what I recommend is just make sure when you're installing the alternator, put that bolt in there, maybe zip that or something to keep it from uh, coming off. So basically now I'm just moving this out of the way and I'm trying to see if the bolt will come out. It did actually come out and looks like it's a possibility of installing it. So we're just gonna add that right there. Now we have access to, uh, I'm trying to see if I have a better way. Uh, yeah, 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 right there. So we need to remove that, that bolt right there. It's a positive, it looks like a 10 millimeter from here, but I'm not sure. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove it. I was wrong, that's not a 10 millimeter, it's a 12 millimeter socket. Make sure you have your battery disconnected when doing this guys, because this can cause some sparks and potentially a burn or a flash or whatever, you know. So make sure you disconnect your battery. So basically I've installed that right there as you can see. Okay, so I got my wrench on it. It's nice and tight. Now I'm just gonna basically wiggle it. Okay, now it's, it's loose enough to where I'll probably get it by hand. Okay, I'm basically getting it by hand right now and just twisting it off. Um, most everything that I've uh, broken loose, I was able to get by hand afterwards. Now, this is my second time doing it, so, but in like about three years. So, uh, let's see, let's just get that positive cable out. Uh, Okie dokie, it is, it is off. Now, if you are having charging problems with your alternator, you wanna inspect these uh, wires here inspect it for any corrosion uh anything like that make sure uh all that stuff is good um it doesn't appear that there's any corrosion in in here um but that doesn't mean that it's not there uh looks fairly clean here but basically what i want to do is go ahead and remove this alternator uh now from the bottom get it to the parts store so they could actually test it and we'll see see if it's any good